Hi, this is Mrs Sykes and today we're going to have a look at how and why the breathing rate changes during exercise. Now you might end up having a graph that looks a little bit like this to deal with. But before we have a look at this graph in detail, I'm going to start looking at some of the science behind why is this shape. So respiration is all about getting as much energy as you possibly can. And there are two different types aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. And before we look at what those words mean and the equations and all of that stuff, the most important thing here is that aerobic respiration releases more energy. So in all circumstances, you would always want to be doing aerobic exercise because it's releasing a larger amount of energy. So now we need to look at why one is different to the other. Aerobic means that it has got lots of oxygen. So that glucose is being broken down in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic means when there is no oxygen. So if you want to be getting as much energy as possible, you want to be maximising the amount of oxygen that you can get to your muscles. And that is the fundamental reason why your breathing rate changes during exercise. If your breathing rate is higher or faster, it means more oxygen is travelling through your blood and therefore getting to your muscles. If there is more oxygen available, then more aerobic respiration can take place and relieve as much energy as it possibly can. If there isn't enough oxygen, then some anaerobic respiration can take place. It's not going to release as much energy as aerobic does, but it's still a little bit and it might help you. So in an ideal situation, deliver lots of oxygen in the blood, get loads of oxygen to those working muscles so that lots of energy can be released. So. In order to release lots and lots and lots of energy, we need lots of oxygen. So we need a higher breathing rate. Down here on our graph, this is our normal. So if you were sleeping, for example, or just sat down, this is the amount that we would breathe. So at the beginning of the graph, and also at the end of the graph, this is our resting or normal breathing rate. The amount that we normally breathe. And then in between, we can see that it's gone up. If you're breathing more, you are allowing more oxygen to carry through the blood and get to your muscles. So in theory, there is now more oxygen in your blood going to your muscles to supply those muscles with oxygen. So we can break open the glucose and release energy. Okay, so about here is where the exercise is going to have started. So the more we exercise, the more our breathing rate goes up because we're supplying more oxygen. And don't forget that more oxygen is to allow us to do loads and loads of aerobic respiration to release loads of energy. And we keep going up to some kind of maximum rate. So this up here, this is going to be our max. It's not going to be able to go any more than that. And then it's going to go back down. Now, you would think that the point where it starts to go down is when we've stopped exercising. But actually, you'll probably find, if you look carefully at the graph that you've been given for your exam question, it's usually slightly before. So the exercise will start here just at the point at which it starts to go up. And then the exercise will stop a little bit before it starts to go down. And the reason why there's that delay is something called oxygen debt. So this delay is due to our oxygen debt. And to work out what on earth that means, we need to go back to our two different types of respiration. So we've got Aerobic respiration, that's the great one, releases loads of energy using oxygen. Anaerobic, we do when there's no oxygen left and it releases less energy. 
but we also haven't discussed the fact that as well as releasing less energy, it also releases something called lactic acid. And lactic acid, well, it's an acid. Acids aren't good to have in our body any particular large quantities. Our body doesn't respond well to pH changes when it's not used to it. So lactic acid is toxic and it is going to be damaging our body. And it is lactic acid that's the problem. It will cause something called fatigue. And fatigue is basically when you start to get tired and your muscles hurt and you have cramp. And in biology, we just focus on the word fatigue rather than any of those others. So we've got anaerobic respiration going on to release a bit of energy and it makes this lactic acid. But the lactic acid causes fatigue and because it is toxic, it needs to be got rid of. This is what happens here. In this time bit here, we are breathing more heavily than we would normally need to if we were not exercising. But we're breathing more heavily, not because we're trying to release energy for the exercise. We're done exercising, exercising finished here. We're now breathing heavily because we need to break down the lactic acid. So this bit here removes the lactic acid. And the lactic acid is taken away by using oxygen. So we talk about the oxygen debt. What we actually mean is bits of lactic acid kicking around in the muscles in our legs and our arms being broken down by oxygen. So you have to keep on breathing a bit longer in order to break down the lactic acid that you have managed to build up in your body. Okay, so if you're talking this through in an exam question then, you would talk about the rate of breathing increases, which supplies more oxygen to the muscles. Those muscles need the oxygen for aerobic respiration to release extra energy. But there will be a point where there is not enough oxygen left. At that point, we start doing anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration creates lactic acid, which can also cause fatigue, but it does produce a bit of extra energy. Because we've made lactic acid, even after exercise has stopped, we still need a high breathing rate because we need to break down the lactic acid because lactic acid is toxic to the body. And breaking that lactic acid back down using oxygen is called repaying the oxygen 